Buck Matteo trades Don Kaufman. August 11th, 2020. Minutes to go to the cash close here on this Tuesday afternoon. Tonight, we start in one of the more unlikely areas when describing the marketplace. Obviously, a lot of you are probably looking specifically at the S&Ps or more importantly and appropriately, the, uh, the NASDAQ futures. Now, I'm actually going to start with a bifurcation that is absolutely ripping the marketplace apart. If you take a look at the uh, advanced decline line, I think a lot of people are probably going to miss this inside of the S&P 100. Sure, I could pull up the S&P 500, but push it aside for a second. All that matters right now, of course, are the S&P 100 stocks because they're the ones with the market capitalization to move this thing. You're looking at almost a pure 50-50 advanced decline line with the S&P is facing almost, again, almost a 1% decline. Now, if you recall, a couple of weeks ago, I took a lot of uh, hits on email for this one. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about the death of diversification. This is precisely what we're describing. You know what? This marketplace, it's not correlated, not even close to correlated. I mean, you're on a 50-50 advanced decline line. And what you have to recognize, and probably the biggest takeaway from anything on this tape, and I'm going to show you some interesting things on this tape here momentarily, Probably the largest takeaway, though, we're in a non-correlated state. The S&Ps are capable of going down 1%. Can you imagine? And I said this on the weekend video. You know, you're going to know when the sell side activity gets real. And when it gets real, that's going to correlate. That's when you're going to see, for instance, 95 products trading to the downside. And can you imagine, though, what it would look like with 95 stocks to the downside today? The S&Ps would down, what, easily 100, 150. The risk continues to grow. But... Today's trading session, it really is all about this bifurcation that is effectively ripping the markets apart. And with that, let's get into it. Again, it's real unlikely to start with an advanced decline line here, but come on, 50-50 advanced decline line with the S&Ps getting, you know, clocked. Not to mention, you got the financials up by the tune of over 1%. There's the closing bell, but the financials are up some 1%. And when I start talking about bifurcations, you know, I can sit here and I can show you all kinds of comparison charts, push it all aside. I think the best way to describe the bifurcation inside of the marketplace, okay? This is, again, it's part of this sector rotation game, but the best way to describe it is to look at expected moves and these auto expected moves. Now, for those of you that are kind of in the know, you understand that expected moves have everything to do with option pricing. So the option market was kind of handicapping. We're going to come up here. And what's up here? We'll call that 25.50. That's the upside, all right? So the options market from what? Last week's, last Friday's close was kind of a projecting a move from right around 24, again, 24.84, all the way up here close to 25.50. We literally hit that today. Okay, and pulled back. But what I wanted you to see here inside of the financials is that we're sitting just riding, if you will, on the upper edge of the expected move. Now, to switch gears for just a moment, let's move away from the financials. Let's go directly to the QQQ, which is, of course, tech. And let's talk tech because tech is the exact opposite. We are literally sitting, and that's what that little dot means right there. We're sitting on the bottom side of the expected move. And again, this expected moves, this is the option market, handicapping risk a week ahead. And it's an incredibly effective way, okay, to look at markets on a week-to-week -week basis or month-to-month -month basis and kind of see, again, visually here, how bifurcated the marketplace happens to be. You got financials effectively straight up. You've got the NASDAQ straight down. Okay. If you take a look throughout the course of the day, you know what really shifted the marketplace today? You know, it wasn't so much the financials that faded because I think a lot of people would probably point out, well, you know, of course, tech pulled down the marketplace. Yeah, tech pulled down the marketplace, right? But the financials, they faded ever so slightly. I'll tell you what really changed today. It was right here in the energy sector. And I think, again, a lot of people probably missed that. The energy sector was having an absolutely stellar day and sliding throughout the course of the day. So if you look at the financials alone, the financials alone are not enough anymore to sustain a rally inside of the S&Ps. You have to have financials, okay, coupled with the energy sector to offset what big tech is doing. When I say big tech, this is the monsters of tech. This is your, your Microsoft, your Apple, you know, your Facebook, your Amazon, your Google. But you have to actually have two sectors now, literally energy and, again, financials 
have to be kind of coupled together and rally and maintain that rally to offset some of the sell side activity. So when I looked over here at none other than the energy sector, and I brought up the energy sector on auto expected moves, this one you'll find interesting. Okay, the energy sector ripped outside of its auto, you know, uh, its expected move, pulled back inside of it. Again, very similar, if you will, to the financials, but it was the slippage inside of the energy sector that actually gave it up in the uh, in the S&P 500. And that is actually what uh, proliferated some sell side activity. Again, one of the biggest points to be made, though, you're looking at a 50-50 advanced decline line with the S&Ps down 1%. Don't kid yourself. You get the other stocks correlated with that, and you are facing severe sell side activity. Now, is this the beginning of something, you know, more broad? I'm not ready to state that yet. And, and I want to make that really, really clear right now because everybody's like, is this it? Is this, is this the sell off we're looking for right now? I told you, you'll know when the sell side activity really kind of hits the fan and that's going to be predicated in very large part on these correlating. When this correlates, that's when you should probably, uh, you know, look for the door. And I'll tell you what, by the time though, the S&P started to correlate, it's already too late. And I'm going to show you exactly why it's too late. And that's one of the big portions of tonight's video is it's not just talking about this wild bifurcation that's ripping the markets apart. Listen, I think people get it, right? There is sell side activity and fairly substantial sell side activity specific to the monsters of tech. And that includes, of course, look at the last three days inside of Microsoft, okay? Apple, Apple just joined the party effectively today down about 3%. Take a look at uh, Facebook, Facebook, two days of sell side activity after a huge reaction though, big reactionary high, big reversal on that one. Amazon, Amazon, I don't know what a 60, $70 move. That's not exactly hideous, but again, we've had like a little bit of a three day streak to the downside. Even Google started to play into this one a little bit, but again, it's not substantial until the entire market starts to correlate. However, let me give you a little bit of a different take here for just a moment, because I think, again, a lot of people are going to miss a few things. Number one, we're not even close to correlated. OK, right. I think a lot of people have missed that. Number two, I think you have to look at the bond market. The bond market, this should scare you a little bit. The volatility picked up substantially inside of the bond market. Now, for those of you that tuned into the weekend video, OK, we said buy volatility in the bonds and buy it with both hands. I mean, literally said that we actually purchased gamma irons we purchased gamma irons inside of the bond product uh more appropriately we actually did it right here inside of the tlt the bonds okay big shift to the downside a little bit of rally towards the close but that's because they're sell side activity nevertheless the one thing we got right volatility is all over the bond product right now volume is exploding inside of the bonds as well after uh, a very large nap inside of the uh, bond product we are finally getting a little bit of an uptick, again, uptick in volatility inside of, uh, well, today's trading session. Now, as I was saying, the bonds, they've actually come to life. And the moment the bonds come to life and start to sell off, well, it raised up interest rates. Mm, interest rates rising might be good, maybe a little reflation trade here, but uh, it helps the financials until it doesn't, okay? And it's, again, there's kind of a two-way street over here where, you know, the interest rates coming up can kind of help the uh, financials unless the interest rates explode higher. And if you take a look at the uh, TNX, okay, if the interest rates explode higher. Well, that'll just pretty much crush the entire marketplace. Nobody's going to like that. So that's one thing I would keep a close eye on. It's not so much about the financials right now. Listen, the financials are going to sell off. If the financials are going to sell off, this marketplace is going to correlate. No if and or but about it. Okay. But the bonds at this point, you're on notice. Okay. The bonds, they've sold off and sold off quite substantially. Uh, and again, volatility is kind of rearing its ugly head. I'd be very, very careful here. If you start to see some more sell side activity in the bonds, all the professional traders are going to start to get nervous. And you can see the big volume spike inside of the bonds specifically today. That should make you a little bit nervous, but I'm even going to push that aside, right? So we have this non-correlation. Eh, you got the bonds kind of selling off, which is making people a little bit more edgy, right? That, that again, as you know, professional traders kind of puts them on guard a little bit. But I'll tell you even one of the more interesting things here. The volatility complex today, it moved and it moved a lot. Of course, a lot of people look at the VIX and like, oh, yeah, the VIX, the VIX is right. It went up a little bit. The VIX should go up. Come on. The S&Ps are down. Right, the Nasdaq, you know, off by almost two percent. Yeah, the, the volatility went up a little bit. Okay, newsflash, nobody cares. Yada yada yada. 
if you take a look at the volatility futures, now the volatility futures, we're going to open up all the contracts there in the volatility futures. And the vol futures, if you take a look at the uh, some of the back month volatility futures, yeah, they're starting uh, they're starting to move a little bit more, but they're not in any type of like, you know, wild inverted we're not even close to that. So, okay, push aside the volatility futures for a second. Yes, I see that volatility is up. But once again, volatility should be up with the S&Ps down. Here's the more alarming aspect. If you take a look at the VVIX, that's the volatility of the volatility index. Yeah, that came to life. That is effectively professionals going out there and uh, buying up the VIX itself. So the VVIX is a measurement of 30 day volatility in the VIX options. And it's not so much the VIX that moved, but the VIX option pricing, which means everybody was looking for a hedge. And you can see I've got tons of positions in here. I am a well positioned volatility trader. Nevertheless, this is something that uh, you really want to keep an eye on in the days to come. The VVIX not just took off. It was, uh, again, north of 110 is what we call the Vama zone. It's deep into it. All of a sudden, the VVIX comes rocketing back. And this, this I pay very careful attention to because to move the VVIX, right, to move the VVIX, what do you have to do? You have to not just trade a bunch of VIX options, but you got to be on the buy side of a ton of VIX options. And uh, that's exactly what you were seeing today. They were on the bid, on the bid inside of uh, VIX options in a fairly substantial way and a meaningful way. That to me is a little bit of a warning shot. So where do I go for the next couple of days? Well, I'll tell you what, if you take a quick glance at the SPX, all right, and the SPX, the mother of all option products, We'll still trade in 3333. And the reason I wanted to bring up the SPX is net net on the week. Okay. On this week, you had uh, in the neighborhood here of about a $63 move up or a $60, uh, $63 move down being priced in. Right now, okay, we're what? We're a hop, skip, and a jump away from the week started. Remember, I'm saying this come Wednesday, come Thursday, come Friday, this marketplace is going to rock, right? We're going to see some more volatility over here. But Keep an eye, all right? If you're looking, uh, is this marketplace going to break down a little bit? I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you a specific level, okay, and what to look for. The marketplace is going to break down. It's got to break well under 3288. That is the downside expected move, right? So not only do you have to get under 3288, which everybody's going to realize, but you got to get well under it. If you think the marketplace is going to come apart at the seams, everything inside the expected move is just that. It's what we should expect. Right. You tag the bottom side of the expected move and people are going to be high fiving each other. Look, I told you we're going to sell off. That means nothing. OK, you got to break through this. You got to tear this marketplace apart. Then you've got to see correlation coefficients. All right. Last but not least, volatility invert. Until those three factors happen, we ain't home yet. And I want to remind you of that. Again, a little bit of sell side activity here. And you can start to almost like smell the fear on people, uh, especially when it comes to like the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, as I talked about in the weekend video, the bidless beast, it's back, right? It's hungry. And uh, hopefully it's not hungry for you. With that, there's a lot to think about again in tonight's video. Remember what I'm saying there about correlation coefficients, the downside expected move, all right? Volatility futures inverting. Uh, again, one day of some sell side activity, people, uh, it doesn't mean that much, but this market is wildly bifurcated, okay, and you do have volatility buyers, you should absolutely be on guard right now. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.